In this video, I'm going to quickly go through the assemblies tutorial that we're going to have you go through on your own. And this tutorial will cover a couple more kind of part design and navigational things within SolidWorks, um, as well as uh, the important part, which is actually how to take two components and establish their relationship to each other to build an assembly. So if we take a look over here, what we're going to do is we're going to build another half of a part that mates with our square thing with a round hole in it that we made in the original one. And we're going to end up with this box with a lip around the edge of it so that the two parts could slide together. So like this, this part with the with the round hole in the middle is like a cap that goes on the other, right? So I'm going to start out by getting rid of this. And we're going to use some of the keyboard shortcuts I just showed you in the previous video. So if you start going through here, we're going to start with this similar uh, rectangle um, rectangle that we're going to hollow out. So I'm going to do S, start a sketch. I'm going to pick my front plane. I'm going to do a rectangle with R. Bring it over here. And then B for dimension. It's going to give me my dimension box. I'm going to go 120 millimeters tall by 120 wide. And you'll notice that I actually have my part set up in inches and then it's showing in metric. Um, one of the cool things that you can do is you can actually key in the units that you're um, you want to use and you don't have to use the same ones for everything. So right now it's showing my extrude depth in imperial in inches. Uh, but if I go into the dimension box and key my 90 millimeter extrusion and key in millimeters, it'll do that in millimeters and then show me that it went 90 millimeters and then the inch equivalent. Um, so then now I've got my base. I'm going to rename this part in the feature tree if I can click on it slow enough. <laughs> Um, I don't know, I'm going to call that the bottom bottom part so I know what I'm talking about. And then the next thing it's going to have me do is fill out these corners. I don't want the face. You want these edges here. We're doing that. Uh, it's going to be a 10 millimeter radius on the fillet. Rename corner fillets. Okay, we're going to do the shell operation like we did before. Um, so you're going to go into features and find. Mine actually looks like it got hidden in the menu. There we go, shell. I'm going to click this face, set my thickness to four millimeters. Okay. Um, okay, so this. Um, this step is showing you one of the ways that you can generate sketch entities. So if I was going to, so this step basically is setting us up so that we're going to extrude that lip that the part is going to mount to. And this part was a little bit confusing for me. So it does things like have you click on the zoom to area button, which as you know, you can use your scroll wheel to do the same thing. All that's showing you is there's some keyboard shortcuts excuse me, some mouse button shortcuts to do some of these things um, that those of you who might still be stuck with a trackpad would find helpful. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make an extruded cut to make that lip. And this has you do, and this is an interesting point, actually. So in the directions, it has you click on this face of the model, which is that lip and then go and click extruded cut. And it's gonna create a sketch on that face where you're gonna make your extruded cut. It actually doesn't matter the order that you do those. Um, so if I get out of that, if I go extruded cut first, it's prompting me to select a plane or a face on which to start my sketch. So I can go extrude and then select that face and it does the same thing. Um, one of the interesting things it teaches you next is you can convert uh, existing geometry on this sketch plane into sketch entities. So rather than doing something like go draw a line, draw your sketch line on top of that, go arc, A for arc, draw that, L for line, and go back and forth and actually sketch out um, 
perimeter on our park, what it lets you do is it will let you pick this face. And then if you go into the sketch toolbar at the top and you go to convert entities, it will take that outer perimeter of your box and make a sketch, sketch entities for you. So now you can treat this just like if you had gone and drawn everything yourself, you just get to skip the entire step of um, having to actually go through and sketch it. So you select the face and go convert entities, and now I've got this box. And then in order to make this lip, we're going to use a feature called offset. So you can you take this existing existing box that we just made, and what we're going to do is we're going to shift all of those lines in one direction or another uh, by a certain amount. So if I select all of those and then come up here at the top to the sketch box and click offset, now you see this yellow line is where the software is going to take all of those features and shift them to one side or another. And since I want to, if you look over on the right side of this tutorial box, what we want to do is we want that cut geometry to overlap our part. So it removes some of the material to make that mounting lip. You'll see over here on the left, there's all these checkboxes of different ways that you can set up this offset. Um, so if I go in and set my what's my offset supposed to be it's supposed to be two millimeters and then i'm going to click reverse and reverse will put the offset on one side or another so i want it to overlap my part so i'm going to reverse it over there click ok now i've got this sketch that overlaps the lip of my part a little bit and when i go out of back out of that one more time it takes me to my cut extrude menu um, so now you can see on the preview that it's taking that cross section that we just made that overlaps a portion of this. We're going to extrude it some depth into our part, right? So it says here, set your depth to 20 millimeters and enter and then click OK. And now it's removed this material from the part. So going through, that's a good, good exercise to get a better grasp of what kinds of different things you can use the, the cut features for. So the next thing that it's going to have you do is do something to change the appearance of the part. So mine is green. Um, the default parts are always gray. So if you go up to the top of your feature tree and right click on the part, you get this color box with the pencil on it that says appearances. So if I click on that and follow the directions in the menu to select this entire feature, then I get this color selection menu. So I have my part selected here at the top. And then I can go and change it. Let's make it blue and change the color there. You can make it look like it's metallic. You can make it look like it's fabric. You can do, there's all kinds of different options for what you can make your parts actually look like within the software. So then if you go to the next step, it's going to have us do our, have us make our assembly. So we're going to go file new. And there's a couple different ways you can do this too. So I'll show you one way. So one way is to go new assembly. OK, and then we open this blank menu. And on the left, it's asking what parts we want to put into the assembly. So all you always get your instructions on the left. So I'm going to go Peter 1 and Peter 2 are the two parts that we wanted to put in already. And it provides you with where in the assembly document you're going to place these. So I'm going to place one there, and I'm going to place one here. It's convenient to kind of put them about how you think they're going to go when you move the parts around. So an important thing to keep track of is the first part that you put in an assembly is fixed. It's locked in space in the model and you can't move it and you move all your other parts relative to it. You can unlock it if you wanted to. Um, depending on what the purpose of your model is, that might be something you want to do. But for example, this first part that we made with the round hole in it, if I click and try and drag around on it, it gives me this little pop up. It's probably hard to read, and it says this component is fixed. It cannot be moved. But if I click and move around on the blue part with the left mouse button, it lets me drag it around. And I can move my view around and kind of drag it roughly into position. And you can see what the idea of move, mating these parts is going to be as you're going to slide those two elements together. Um, so if you click with the left mouse button and drag the part around, it lets you move it. If you click and hold with the right mouse button on the part, it'll let you rotate it to different orientations. So say if I accidentally put it into my assembly backwards, it's really easy to quickly move them around so that they're about in the right position. 
So the next thing that we're going to do to actually couple our parts is now that we're in this assembly document, um, I have this new toolbar at the top called assembly, and that'll let you insert more components into the assembly. It'll let you duplicate. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do up here when you're manipulating a lot of parts at once. And what this is going to focus on is the mate feature. So the mate feature is how you establish how the parts actually connect with each other. So this has you go mate, and you'll see on this toolbar on the left that opened up, I've got mate selections, and I've got all these different ways I can attach stuff. So if you just leave this blank and select features, SolidWorks will try to infer what the, what the sensible way to connect these parts are for you. Um, you can also filter it by what the instructions tell you is to select a coincident mate first. And then I'm going to select these two edges on this part that I know are going to touch each other when I mate my part. So remember, zoom in, zoom way in is a convenient way to select one of those lines. It's really easy to accidentally grab the wrong one. If you're out here, right, they're real close together. So come in, I'm going to grab these two lines and the parts are going to fly together. And those two lines that I picked are now coincident with each other. They line up with each other. So remember, this part's fixed. I can't move it. This part's movable. So the idea is that you need to establish the mating geometry of your parts so that they are locked together in the way that you intend them to be locked together. So right now, only these two lines are lined up with each other. And I've got to establish how the rest of these faces line up. And what I want you to do when you're going through this tutorial is this tutorial only has you do another coincident mate. And it has you choose, for example, these two faces. If I make those coincident, then the blue part will rotate over. And now I can only slide them back and forth. Is this face and this face are lined up with each other. And these edges are lined up with each other. Um, but one, one thing I want you to play with is at the bottom of the feature tree, now that you're in the assembly and you've got these mates started, it'll show you in the feature tree what you established. So I'm going to delete that last one that I made. I want you to play with the different mate options um, just within these two parts, and you'll see what they do. So I can, I can use the coincident mate to put those two faces to each other. Um, you can also do things like make that face parallel with, say, for example, the bottom. And that accomplishes the same thing of aligning these parts as if they were coincident because these two planar faces are now lined up with each other. But depending on your part geometry, you might not actually have faces that line up flat with each other or edges that are square or things like that. So um, play around with those a little bit. One other thing that can be confusing and frustrating when you're trying to get your parts to line up correctly is um, remember when we did the offset geometry to make this lip, you had to tell the software which direction you actually wanted your parts to go. So if I select that face and that face, um, it's going to pick coincident for me. But if I change it back to parallel, there's other boxes on the bottom here that you might need to play with to get the alignment correctly. So like this one here in the bottom left says mate alignment. If I try and flip it that way, it'll rotate my blue part around so that these two edges that I originally made coincident are still coincident, and these faces are still parallel with each other, but it's found a completely different orientation to arrange the parts. So you may have to play with that back and forth also. Um, and as you get into assemblies with more parts and different kinds of mates, you'll find that you're going to have to manipulate and change the order that they go in in order for it to end up with what you want. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, we will be talking to you during lab if you have any further questions about this or other tutorials or general SOLIDWORKS questions, and we'll talk to you then.